Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are doing my updated Charlotte Tilbury lipstick collection video, but I'm going to rope in some other lip products by hers as well. So it's not just going to be lipsticks we're chatting about today. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for joining me today. If you don't know who I am, my name is Maika, I'm from the Netherlands, and I come on here to make videos about eyeshadow palettes, try out new Essence and Catrice products, but also to get the use out of my products. That is always my aim. Yes, I have a larger collection, but I do regular shop my stashes so I can ro th rotate through things, and I really like to use products before I make up my mind and review them. Um, and my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick collection is one that I hold very near and dear to my heart. I did a video with all of my bullet lipsticks, I think, a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and I have come into some more, so I thought I could update you on that. But I have also really discovered glosses in the past year, so I thought, I've got a couple of other Charlotte Tilbury lip products, so why not rope them into this video today, so you have the full lowdown of everything that I have going on in my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick collection. So let's get started. So the way this video is going to be organized is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to put chapters into the video so you can easily find what I've got going on here. I really, really went into like the review of these lipsticks the first time round, so I'm not gonna dwell on that too much. I'm just going to briefly chat about the formulas and then I'm just going to show you all of the shades on. I've got two of our lip liners. I have one of her Jewel Lips lip, uh, lip glosses uh, that I'm going to rope into the lip gloss section together with her collagen lip baths. Then we're going to talk about nudes. Then we're going to be talking about warmer nudes. Then we will chat about deeper nudes, because if you need a nude lipstick, Charlotte is your gal. And we're going to finish the video with reds, which is which are my favorites. Uh, so that's why I have four of those. So yeah, that's a lot that we have to chat about. So let me delve into the first category, which is lip liner. So lip liner, I only have two of these. I'm not a huge lip liner user. Um, the, per the, the best ones I've ever tried, Charlotte Tilbury. These are really nice and creamy. However, after buying these two and the way these lipsticks apply, I feel that I didn't really need this, so these don't get a lot of use in my collection. I will also not be putting them on my lips today. I'm not someone who likes to uh, like f use a lip liner instead of lipstick to give color to their lips because I've taken off what I was wearing in my intro and this is my natural lip color. So I've got quite a lot of lip color going on naturally, so this with just a gloss is fine for me. I don't need to add color to my lips or tone it down or make it more uh, look more neutral. Uh, and I feel that Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, especially the ones in her Matte Revolution line, have such a perfect, easy to use bullet that I don't need a lip liner to get a precise lip line. I just don't. So I have these in Pillow Talk and Pink Venus. They're very used. <laughs> um, but these are some of the creamiest, easiest lip liners I've ever bought and ever used. So Pink Venus is the one to the right, I think it's your left, and the other one to this side is Pink is Pillow Talk. So these are really good lip liners. They're very creamy, very easy to apply. Uh, I've never tried really sharpening these yet, so because they're very creamy it might be easy for them to break. Yeah, Pink Venus is a bit more pinky coral, and then Pillow Talk goes with the Pillow Talk range that she does. So yeah, these are some of the only lip liners I've ever kept around because they're simply that good, and that's why I don't get rid of them. But my recent discovery has been her lip glosses. I'm a little bit of a fan when it comes to lip glosses. I was not someone who loved lip glosses before, and then I started trying some, and I was like, oh. The first one I tried was her Jewel Lips in the shade Pillow Talk. I'm gonna come across Pillow Talk in a number of uh, products today. And this is just really lovely on. It just, it just adds a little bit of color and a little bit of shine, but it's nothing too, too crazy for me. Um, so this is great for every day. Um, now that I've tried the collagen lip baths though, I don't think that this is necessarily my favorite anymore. Um, but it is a good neutral for everyday kind of shade and that's what I love in a gloss. So let me show you this one on my lips. 
So this is what the Jewel Lips in Pillow Talk looks like on me. It's a very inoffensive pinky nude with a little bit of a shine running through it. Like in the packaging, it looks like it's got actual sparkle, but that disappears on your lips. Um, so for me, that's actually perfect, and I really enjoy this shade. But my true loves are the Collagen Lip Baths. She did a mini set of these for Black Friday, and so I was able to try three of the shades. I have uh, Refresh Rose, which is the one I was the most interested in, and I love how this has, it's like a heart-shaped applicator, can you see that? But this is clear on me, like, it's got a bit of a peachy pink kind of vibe going on. Maybe if you have really light lips, it might show up, but on me, even on the back of my hand, and I'm like almost translucent white. Um, this um, this just doesn't really do much in terms of adding color, but these are so hydrating and I love that. We also have the shade Pillow Talk, of course, because if you do a shade, you gotta keep repeating it until everybody has it. Uh, and that's what that shade looks like. That has a little bit more pigment to it, really nice, great for every day. And then the darkest one is Walk of No Shame. And this I really like because it has a little bit of red running through it. And this is the one that I wear if I want to add a bit more color. But these are so hydrating on the lips. It's like, especially in the winter time, these were perfect because when you put these on, you really can forego a lip balm and your lips stay hydrated all day. Refresh Rose. This is Pillow Talk. And this is what Walk of No Shame looks like on me. This is the one that's the most pigmented, so if I actually want to add color, I use this. If I just want to go for that lip balm, no, no makeup, makeup kind of vibe, I can go for these two. These feel very hydrating on the lips, and I love how these sort of fill in any lines you might have in your lips making your lips look super smooth. So especially if you have more mature skin and you have trouble with lipsticks just showing lines in your lips, then definitely try these out because these are lovely. And now we're going into nude lipsticks. And I actually have two that are a little bit more cool toned and two that are a little bit more warm toned. And I wanna start off with the warm tone things Charlotte Tilbury's line, it leans more warm toned, I have to say. So if, like me, you have a cool to neutral undertone, it can be difficult to find shades you like, which is why I want to use show you the other two shades secondly. Uh, so I want to start off with the OG. This is Pillow Talk. This is, of course, what really got the brand. It's like, ah, uh, so many people love this shade. I like it too, but I have found that there's a Catrice lipstick in a formula that I prefer over this that works just as well on me and gives me a, a similar shade. Uh, so I actually prefer Very Victoria on me as a nude. So that's what we're gonna get to in a minute. So let me show you Pillow Talk. So that's what Pillow Talk looks like on me. It's a stunning lipstick still, till this day. I still reach for this. It just, especially compared to Very Victoria, it just looks a little bit more peachy. Maybe I should just swatch that one next. Um, so we have Very Victoria next. So that's what this shade looks like. And then let me swatch it next to Pillow Talk. And then you can just see that they're very similar, but Very Victoria is just a little bit more pink toned leaning than Pillow Talk is. Pillow Talk has a bit more peach. So that's what Very Victoria looks like. And I think you can see what I mean here. I feel that this picks up a little bit more on the cool tone that I have naturally going on in my lips. And that's why this works just a little bit better on me. If I go for a nude, I always reach for this one. Um, but I've got some other offerings here because I thought I could try those. So she came out with a limited edition that was for like a wedding collection. So I really like the packaging of this. And I remember spotting this in store and thinking, Wedding Bells is going to be my next Charlotte Tilbury lipstick for sure. Um, it is a little bit more pink than the other two. So that's what I thought was good. It's like more of a rosy shade. And look at the bullet. I'm not sure if you can see that. But it has this really beautiful imprint of all of these hearts. It's really, really stunning. This is like a warm toned pink and it's really pretty on. And that's what Wedding Bells looks like on me. 
This is so pretty. I'm so happy I got it in the special packaging because it, it means I can just find it a little easier in my collection. But yeah, Wedding Bells, I knew the minute I saw this that it was going to be flattering on me. This is for if I want to go for something a bit more pink toned. And then the last one in this category is the mo most cool toned, I think, of anything that I've got going on here. She does do a mauve shade. It's called Secret Selma. I'm pretty sure it's a Selma Hayek inspired shade because a lot of her shades are inspired by celebrities. And you can just see, compared to everything else, how purple this looks. I was super excited when I spotted this on the website. I bought this as part of a set from her Black Friday sale. And that's what Secret Selma looks like on me. As you can see, it pulls quite purple. So this is perfect if you have a cool undertone. I'm so glad I found this because it's still pink, it's still nude, but it's definitely sort of more that mauve cool toneness that it has. I really, really like this on myself, like this is like, I wish Lisa Eldridge came out with a shade like this because it is really, really lovely and I love how this looks on me. The next category I want to chat about are super warm toned nudes. So those four shades still look very neutral on me, but I also have a few that lean more like peachy coral almost, which is why on me they aren't necessarily nudes that I can wear with anything. Like any of these shades, I can whack on with anything I'm wearing and I'm good to go. With these, I need to be careful what eye makeup I'm wearing or what clothing I'm wearing, whether I can still get away with it because it can be a bit clashing with my pale complexion. Especially right now, it's like March, which means that I'm sort of like at the end of winter, so I'm at my palest at the moment. So this is going to be interesting to see. So this is one of the very few K-I-S-S-I-N-G lipsticks that I have from her, which is her more creamy formula, which I find less comfortable than the matte. So that's why this one is definitely on the chopping block. I'm not sure if this is gonna go live before or after my lipstick declutter, but you'll find that this is one that's gonna go. This is in the shade Stoned Rose. It's a terracotta, nude which right there not really my shade so that's what stoned rose looks like i think this is going to be perfect if you have a warm or an olivey undertone because then some of those yellows and oranges that this lipstick has is going to show up really nicely against your skin tone on me this just looks orange <laughs> So for me, this is just not really, really perfect, which is why this one sadly has to go. One that I feel is quite similar to this, but it's softer, is Sexy Sienna. And this is one of my oldest Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. It's a peachy coral sort of matte lipstick. And I remember, because this has a little bit more brightness to it, you just see how much more vibrancy this has, that it still works on me quite well. It's quite a flattering coral shade, but still very muted. And this is why Sexy Sienna is going to stay. I believe this was named after Sienna Miller. And by the way, uh, I'll make sure to put in the description box if the shade names have changed, uh, because I do know that some of her product range, those names have changed over time. So if that's the case for anything, I'll make sure to put it in the description box. I don't know that off the top of my head. But yeah, this is a really lovely shade. So this is one that I don't wear often, but whenever I wear it, it always makes me feel good. I think it goes well with my brown eyes and my blonde hair. For some reason, it's a really good summer shade for me to tie everything together. And the latest uh, addition to this lineup is Glowing Gen. And I think this is another matte lipstick, but this is from the Hot, Lip, uh, Hot Lips range. And I'd never tried any of the Hot Lips, so this is my first one. Uh, it has a really stunning like leopard print kind of uh, vibe to it. And this is another like warm uh, lipstick. And for me, it's like the more perfect version of Stone Rose, which is another reason why that one can go. Uh, this has a bit more red running through it. It's a bit more brown. It's deeper as well, which I think is why it works a bit better on me. And that's what Glowing Gen looks like on me. I think it's very flattering. Actually, this is what I wanted Stoned Rose to look like. It's got a bit of pink, a bit of red, a bit of orange. It's, if I want to go terracotta nude, this is the one for sure. 
and this was a free gift with purchase when I placed my order with the black, in the Black Friday sale. If you spend over a certain amount, you got this baby for free. So that one didn't even cost me any money. Next up are deeper nudes. And one of these isn't even a nude, I have to warn you. <laughs> um, because these are some more like berry shades almost, you could say. So these are definitely deeper than anything we've seen so far. My newest here is Pillow Talk Intense which I believe is the other uh, K-I-S-S-I-N-G lipstick that I have here. So this is another one of the more creamy formula ones. And this is really lovely. This is part of the set that I purchased Secret Selma in as well. Like I was able to pick a shade from each of her like lineup. So you could pick, I believe it was a red and like a neutral or like something like that. It was like three lipsticks and then it was a set and I got a discount because it was Black Friday. Let me swatch this on my other hand. And this... I wasn't sure about at first because the Pillow Talk Intense blush, that was far too intense for me. But this, it's like the more amped up version of Glowing Gen, I find. Like it is that reddish toned sort of brown tone that I like, but it is more intense for sure. I don't feel it's that similar to Pillow Talk though. So that's what Pillow Talk Intense looks like on me. I really like this shade because it is quite brown, but you can definitely see that it's got a reddish undertone, which it really picks up on when I put it on. And that's why I feel it still works against my fair skin tone. An OG that I'm pretty sure the name has changed up. This is Bond Girl, which is like my favorite, like deeper nudes that I've owned so far from her. I think it's actually quite similar to Pillow Talk Intense. What do we think? It's not as brown, I think. It's not as dark, but it definitely has a similar undertone. Again, has that reddish undertone to it that I like. And that's what Bond Girl looks like. I believe it's now called Am I Kiss, if I'm not mistaken. This is so, so pretty on. It definitely pulls a bit more purpley on me than perhaps most people, because I feel this lipstick pulls on, like really amps up the purple I have in my lips. But this is more of a nude on me than um, the Pillow Talk Intense one is for sure, which is why this kind of goes into the, like the deeper nude kind of category. I think if you have deep skin, then both of these can be really good nude shades on you. On me, they just add a bit more color. And then finally in this section, we have Love Liberty, and this is definitely a berry. This is such a stunning lipstick. I don't wear this a lot because I have other berries that I just like a touch better than this but it is still very pretty and I'm glad to own it. So as far as berries go, I think that Love Liberty is very pretty, but it's a bit more, I would say like raspberry leaning rather than like blackberry leaning. It's just far less plummy in undertone and it has quite a bit of warmth to it, which is why it's not my favorite berry lipstick in my collection, but if I wanna go for a berry that is very pretty if you mute it down, like let me show you this. If you blot this down, of course I'm smudging the foundation around my face now, but this is just really, really pretty if you tone it down just a little bit and you don't wear it too full on. Like this, maybe a gloss on top makes for such a pretty lip look. And the final section are my reds. And we're gonna start with the lightest one here. I was going to say the OG, but we have to start with this because else I can't take these swatches off. So this is the lightest one I've got going on. And this is Lost Cherry. And this is like, it's not really a red. It's not really a pink. It's like, as far as pinks go, it's a bit too red. And as far as reds go, it's a bit too pink. I'm getting a similar vibe from this as I'm getting from Max Relentlessly Red where I kind of almost feel it's like the more pink toned version of Sexy Sienna, so you could call this a coral if you'd like. But on me, it's like a very vibrant, almost neon-y pinkish red. I'm not sure if that makes sense. This is a really, really good fun shade for the summertime if you want that popsicle kind of vibe. So that's what Lost Cherry looks like. It's it's not quite a red, not quite a pink, but on, in my brain, this fits into the red category because it just kind of goes 
with what a red can give you if you were to tone it down and you add a lot of white. That's what that's the way I feel about this. It definitely still has that peachy undertone that she likes to do in almost every single one of her lipsticks. And then we're going for the OG and then we'll get to some things that I haven't shown you before. This is Red Carpet Red, which is one of my all-time favorite lipsticks when it comes to reds. It's so, so pretty and I've told this story before, but when I put Red Carpet Red on in store when I was going to buy this, the makeup artist didn't want to take it off <laughs> because it looked that good on me. You'll see when I put this on, something happens to my face when I put on a blue tone red. And there we have red carpet red. Again, now I don't want to take this off. <laughs> but I'm going to have to because I've got two more reds to swatch for you that are both a little bit deeper. But yeah, red carpet red is Charlotte Tilbury's classic matte red lipstick. If you're looking for a good matte red lipstick, there are many offerings on the market. I'm sure you can find a shade like this at a drugstore price point as well. It's just that I feel this lipstick has the longevity and the kind of wear time that I want out of a red. This doesn't transfer weirdly. It doesn't, you know, coat your teeth. It doesn't bleed. I'm a teacher. I talk a lot. I eat lunch and this can last a full work day without fail. So that's why this is still very high up on the list of all-time favorite lipsticks. Next up, I want to show you Magic Red. And this is also really pretty. It's deeper than Red Carpet Red is. Um, and I think, wasn't this last year's Lunar New Year launch? I think it was, which is why it comes in the red packaging, which I appreciate because then I'm like, now I can easily pinpoint where my red lipsticks are because if you have a bunch of these, they're very difficult to tell apart. So yeah, this is, it's red, but it's a deeper red. And I love these like deeper 1920s, 1930s inspired reds on myself, especially for parties. And I hope that now that 2022 is upon us, that we can go to parties again. This is such a lovely shade. So let me show you this on. And this is what Magic Red looks like on me. It looks a lot darker in the tube than it does when she put it on, I feel. Even in a full-on swatch, it looks almost like it's going to be a plummy berry shade until you put it on. And that's when you really see that this is like a deeper, more intense red, which I love because for years I struggled finding reds like this that weren't just your classic, like bright, vibrant, blue-toned red but that had a bit more saturation and that lead, didn't lean too purple. For years, what was on the market was red or berry. And this is sort of like that in between where it's still red, but you get the depth and like the vampiness that most berry shades will give you. So that's why I really appreciate this one. But finally, the darkest one I have is also the last one I bought. This is Scarlet Spell. And this was another one of the three lipsticks that I got in the set for Black Friday. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got all these lips imprinted on the bullet. Really pretty. And this, I just thought was even going to be like a little less berry than Mar Magic Red, but a still like a darker red. I'm not sure why, but Scarlet Spell, I just thought was like a great lipstick for like the holiday season. You know what I mean? Like that sort of Christmas red. That's what this reminds me of. And this is what Scarlet Spell looks like. It is red, for sure, but it's not that intense of a red where you can't, like, make it wearable. You know, it's got depth, but it's nothing too, too vampy. It's sort of like in between, which I really enjoy. So these are all of the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks that I wanted to chat to you about today. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope this video was useful. I'll make sure to leave any links down below in the description box if I have reviews up for these on my blog. I'll make sure to direct you to that as well if you want to see more close-ups of swatches and things like that, then that's possible, of course. So thank you so very much for being with me here today. Please thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope you would like to stay tuned and come back for more. Uh, I hope to see you in my next video, everybody. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.